I'm CK. Tonight we've got another inexpensive soldering practice kit from Amazon. This is Peminol Lucky Wheel DIY a soldering project. So it's a kind of a lucky wheel. Again, I'm not quite sure what it is, but we'll put it together, see if it's good practice, and see if it's a fun kit in the end. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's see what we have in here. We start out with a big old disc-shaped circuit board. And we've got, looks like, LEDs around the outside. And we've got a cap here, IC here, another IC here. That's probably a switch. It's a capacitor, power regulator, something, maybe a transistor, but I don't think so. It's probably a trimmer is what that probably is. That looks like a switch. I think I said that couple of resistors and this looks like batteries and on the back well, not much but the traces are really clear so if you want to learn how this works you'd be able to follow the traces very successfully and the board material looks good and it's all through hole plated so that's all positive it's kind of big and here we have a parts list that it's all in Chinese, but you can figure most of it out, so wouldn't worry about that. Uh, I think they have a QR code for a build guide, too. Or maybe not. Huh. I may have to look on the product page for that. So here's the stuff. Not much stuff, but some. Two batteries, these are 2032s, probably. Doesn't say. Battery holders. Switch with the pins bent a little bit, but that's okay. Two ICs, a uh, CD 4717BE, which is a multiple counter. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this one now. These pins are all scraggly. And this is a NE555P, so it's a 555 timer. Which, as you may know, they are ubiquitous in electronics. They are everywhere. So I'm straightening up the pins. This uh, board actually comes with, whoa, it comes with uh, sockets for the ICs. Many of these inexpensive kits simply have you solder the IC directly to the board, but this comes with sockets, which I think is good for training and to get used to how you can, how you put chips in sockets. I mean, there's a first time for everything, and this may be the first time somebody puts a chip in a socket, so I'm glad they include them. It's too bad all the pins got all scraggly, but again, with some needle nose pliers, you can get them straightened up again and parallel. Here's a switch. I don't know what it'll be. That's a momentary switch. This is a full locking switch. And yeah, here's a trimmer to adjust. Uh, it probably adjusts the resistance uh, on that's going to the 555 to set the time, the time base that it's working with. And the 555, I'm sorry, it's triple, I'll just say triple five. The triple five chip is going to be feeding God, these pins really are messed up. Uh, is going to be feeding into this uh, counter, so 
that's basically how it's going to work. It's, it's a relatively simple circuit. Let's take a look at one of these LEDs. See how bright they are. See if they're working. Put it on your little solder pad. Take your meter in continuity mode. Put your positive lead on the positive leg. Negative lead on the negative leg. Try not to bridge them, which is what I just did. That's why I beeped. Hip, it's doing it again. I have to spread them a little bit. And there we go. Nice. Well, not nice. These are kind of cloudy LEDs. But, not a big deal. So that's it. Not much to it. I'll get the soldering iron heated up and we'll put this thing together. So a little more context for what this is. So what you do is, after you put it together, it's a little game. Each person chooses a number, and when the LED light at the number lights up, the person who chooses a number will be punished. Write the punishment on the DIY, a DIY lucky wheel, then press a button and do the things corresponding to the number where the LED lights up. So it's not necessarily always punishment. Let me show you another picture. So down here... You look at it and zero is kiss, one is sing, two is dance. So you pick a number and if it spins around and gets to your number, uh, you do that. And look, look, see? See how happy these children are? You know it's got to be a good kit. Because the children are very happy. And... and this... This poor girl is being forced to use a plumbing type soldering iron to put this thing together. She's not going to have fun with that. Okay, I'll stop making fun of the product page. Uh, they do have an installation guide and it comes fully step-by-step -step pictured which is always superior. I, you know, again, I'm recording this in 2022 if you are not using lots of digital pictures in your build guide, you are failing your customers. It's so simple, it doesn't cost you extra, and just take pictures, uh, particularly for beginner kits. Just make it really simple. So let's put this thing together. My solder is under my pan of ice, so I had to fight with both of them. So we'll do the 470K. I mean, there are, there are two resistors for crying out loud, so this is not going to be... We're, we have no resistor time today, lads and lassies, because there's only two resistors. If this takes me more than... 15 minutes, I will be sad. Golly, it's going to take me more than 15 minutes because I can't get the resistors through. That's not their fault, that's my fault. Now we'll put the IC socket for the 555 timer. Uh, one thing this doesn't have, I'm, I'm, double, I'm double checking, it doesn't have a schematic, which is too bad. So, I'm holding the socket on the back of the, cir of the circuit board with my pinky, and I'm going to solder one pin, and I'm going to flip it back over and take a look, make sure everything is parallel and flat to the board, and it is. Now we'll do the same thing with the other one. And I'm going to, oh, that's the chip, that's not the socket. And we'll put that on there. Making sure, because again, the pins were all cattywampus. So I'm going to have to do a little manual adjustment to make sure they all go in well. And same thing. Solder one leg, double check that it's all flat, 
and it is not all flat. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. And now I'll go ahead and solder all the connections I've got set up now. And this is a good quality uh, circuit board. The solder flows very well. Now we're going to put the battery holders in. And the guide cautions us that you want to pay attention. There's a little mark here and here and the battery holder has got a drop down tang here that's got to go there and the reason for that is because they're going to face opposite ways and you slide the batteries in if you put this backwards you're not going to be able to slide the battery in so just be careful of that now this one already wants to go this this battery holder is saying, no, put me in first, put me in first. And I'm going to do the same thing again, even though I don't really need to. There's enough spring tension from the metal legs that it's staying in place. Go ahead and when you do something like this, glob the solder on because this is the only mechanical support that you have for the battery holder and for sliding the battery in and out so if you don't if you only put a little dab of solder it's possible that when you slide a battery in or out it may just uh, break the solder connection and the battery holder will come loose and you don't want that of course so oops I just dropped the solder on the floor but that was a very short piece left, so I just grabbed some more. So, yeah, lots of solder. Make it nice, nice, strong connection. Next step, the little momentary switch, which this one will start and stop your game. It only goes in one way. If you try to put it in the other way, the legs won't fit. So if you if you say to yourself, hmm, these legs seem a little wrong, just rotate it 90 degrees, then you'll get it in place. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put the transistor in also while I'm here and probably this cap too. And silk screen on the board shows you flat side to flat side. And uh, I think I should be putting the trimmer in. Yeah, we'll put the trimmer in here also. And this again, these are legs that just lock into the holes so you don't have to support them at all while you're soldering. And one more thing, we'll put the uh, one microfarad cap here on this side. Yep, 50 volt, one microfarad. And it's polarized, of course. And there's a plus sign here to show where the positive lead goes, as well as a shaded area on the other half that shows you where the negative lead goes. So we've got all these little guys ready to get soldered. Now we'll go to the other side and put the locking switch in, which is the basically, oops, got that capacitor a little crooked, which is the on off switch for the whole project. And we'll put this big ol' uh, huh. He wants us to put the LEDs in before we put the 220 microfarad cap in. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the cap in right now because I feel like it. Again, same thing. Positive lead is marked very clearly. Uh, 
Now we'll put all the LEDs on. And again, the positive and negative locations are marked very clearly on the printing on the circuit board. So all you have to do is actually follow it. And that's all the LEDs soldered on. Now we'll put the chips in, and I gotta be really careful here, because again, the chips got, were all snaggly. Where did I put my silly needle nose? Huh? It's probably behind the iPad. So you wanna make sure these are all straight and parallel. So they go in the chip well, notch to notch. And there's the 555 timer. Push these legs in a little bit. Now we'll put the decade counter in. This one's a little trickier. The pins aren't quite great. But I'll just adjust them. Oops! They'll just hop out. So I'm going to do this set. There we go. And there's that's all in. I'll get the batteries out. And they are 2032s, which are little 3 volt uh, lithium. And I believe the positive side goes down, because that's why it's marked on the board. Put that in. Okay, let me turn this light off. And. Nothing particular happens. I may have the batteries wrong, so we'll shove them back out and flip them around. There we go. That's funny, I'm getting some flashes even though I've only got one battery swapped around. There we go. Okay. Let's get uh, ah. Okay, we'll power it up again and it flashes. You press the button and it flashes a lot. And it's supposed to stop on a particular number, but it's not stopping. I'm going to turn the power off and power back on. Let me adjust this resistor. Okay, it's circling around and spinning, but it's not making with the stop. Maybe we have to, maybe I'm be, being too impatient. Okay, it's not going to stop it for me again. I got it to work once. Now I 
adjust this silly pot again, see what I can do. So again, I got it to work once, but then it stopped working again. So once again, hope you enjoyed the video. I spent a bunch of time with this potentiometer because that's the one, uh, obviously, that controls, not obviously, that's the one that controls the rate of the timer and the, uh, if you look on the side, well, like you can't really see it, but uh, I finally think I got the exact position where this works. So now we'll hit the button and it goes round and round and round, round and round and round. Round and round and round. Now you can see it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and there we go. We stop at four. So if you had number four, or whatever you wrote in there, the youngster or whomever you're playing the game with would have to do. So that's kind of fun. And again, it does work. You just have to tweak that potentiometer until you can find the exact spot where it's going to circulate and then finally stop. So we've had four, we've had two. I wonder if it's all going to be even numbers. Maybe I should do a statistical analysis on this. Nope, there's a one, so never mind. So it does work. And again, it's a fun little kit. It's very quick. A uh, young builder would be able to do this very successfully. And the only frustrating part would be trimming that pot to exactly where you want to be. Hope you enjoyed the video.